I'm Racing Bowden and I'm going to the 2012 London Olympics. Race is extraordinary for how young and how consistent he is and how much success he's experienced. His competitors are all 10 years older than he is. I've been coaching race for five years. I think from a very early age, you could see when he was holding his foil that he was very confident and that he really wasn't intimidated by people who had more experience. I'm number one in the country and I'm number four in the world. I used to play ball right down the street. 22 before. When you look at the best athletes in the world, usually they have something that drives them. They have a chip on their shoulder. And I think for me, that was just from the get-go in my sport, I wasn't the average fencer. I wasn't clean cut. I had long hair. I still think he likes to see himself as the underdog and have something to prove. Fencing, I always say, is the physical chess. It's a complete balance between physical work and mental work. I had one of the worst mental psyches on this trip. Race had a terrible time as a youth fencer. He knew what he wanted to do and sometimes couldn't make it happen technically or things didn't go his way. I mean, many bouts ended in tears even when he won. The real difference between what makes a good fencer and a world-class fencer is how they're able to control their emotions. Jed taught me that you can use and alter your emotions to help you. Race seems to have a more calm presence now. He doesn't have to go crazy. Fencing is a combat sport and different from other combat sports. You're touching each other, but you're touching each other and within one touch you have to be able to change, you know, how you did it the last time. In electric fencing, the target area where you can touch the other person is that metal vest that they're wearing. When they touch that, there will be a colored light that goes on, whether you're on the right or the left side. The intensity in fencing is such a high level. You have to be able to trick the person basically over and over again in order to get touches and win the battle. So it's like your mind is constantly running, constantly running, constantly running, trying to trick the person. I could be the fastest guy in the world, but if you have something that's tactically smarter than I do, you could beat me. And that's difficult. Growing up, all you know, my competitors were from families with better means than I had. Fencing's not cheap. You know, the equipment's expensive. The travel you're paying for yourself. The challenge was basically being able to afford plane tickets, hotel rooms, and rental cars. My mother started working again after she hadn't worked for you know a decade, and my father was working extra shifts. And everybody was trying to kind of chip in to like help me achieve my goals. As soon as he could, we started to try and teach him how to be self-sufficient. We would arrive at an airport, and we would send Race ahead and let him check himself in. I actually went to my first competition alone when I was 14. That meant me growing up really quickly. But in hindsight, it didn't stop him. I think it fired him up, actually, more than it stopped him. We've never seen race fence internationally. The very first time that we'll be able to do that will be at the Olympic Games. I'm sure there'll be some tears shed and my mom's a crier. No, I am very emotional. Race's greatest strength at the Olympics is that he 
lives for big stages. You can say that you want to go to the Olympics, but when that day comes, you know deep down inside if this is an opportunity to make a mistake or if this is an opportunity for something amazing to happen. And I think he sees it as you know something amazing can potentially happen. The biggest thing about the Olympics is that there's nothing else like it. I want to just have my body ready, be mentally ready, and just be ready to fence. When I do well and I see my flag raise, you know, it's, there's nothing else, you know, nothing beats that.